Welcome to the Same Side Selling Podcast. I am your host, Ian Altman. There are three beliefs that you need to be able to achieve in order to be successful in B2B sales. And these may be somewhat unexpected beliefs. The first one is going to be obvious, but the next two, maybe not so much. And it's the crux of why I believe some organizations struggle in the world of B2B sales. The first one is the obvious one, which is, well, your client, your customer needs to come away with some level of belief that your product or service is worthy of a change. It might be changing from an existing vendor. It might be changing from the way they did things before. And ultimately, they have to be convinced that they're going to get a better outcome, that it's worth going through the effort of making a change because every change requires some level of effort, that it's worth going through that change in order to move to what you offer. Now, part of that is if they believe that it's worth the change, then it's probably worth the investment to make that change. But fundamentally, they need to believe that it's going to be worth that change. And that's kind of the first obvious piece. The second one is the seller needs to have the belief that whatever you're selling is worth buying. Because you may have something that is better that they don't necessarily believe is going to move the needle enough to make it worth the investment. So if it's incrementally better, if it just moves things a little bit, but they don't think they're going to see a big outcome difference, then why would they invest in that sort of change? The third one, the third belief is something that is actually what really moves the needle. And that is that your client needs to believe that they can actually take advantage of whatever it is you're selling and actually achieve the results that other people have also seen. Now, this is an area that most sellers spend very little time on. And what happens is the seller says, well, look, I know that we've got a better product and I know that our product is the best thing. And for people who use it properly, they get this great result. So the client should be totally, totally comfortable buying our stuff. But the single greatest reason why B2B customers don't buy something is ironically not because they don't believe in your ability to deliver. It's that they don't necessarily believe in their team's ability to execute whatever it is that you provide to them. So let's say you sell a piece of software and your piece of software does amazing things. They might say, you know what? My team's too lazy. They're not going to have the discipline to follow through. They're not going to actually take advantage of this product. So even though this product is a great tool, I don't know that my team's really going to take advantage of it. This is something that's very common with customer relationship management platforms, CRMs. So products like Salesforce or HubSpot, or there are a variety of ones that are specific to individual industries as well. But what I want you to realize is that it's not that people don't say, oh, a CRM will help an organization do better in sales. What they're often saying when they don't execute this is, you know what? We've implemented three CRMs in the past and we can't get our team to use them. So if you want to show me why our team is more likely to use your product, if you want us to see that your product is easier to use or people are more likely to adopt it, great. But otherwise, we just don't believe in our ability to execute or implement it. For example, in our Same Side Selling Academy, we have case study after case study, testimonial after testimonial of companies that have achieved extraordinary growth using Same Side Selling. And people say, well, why doesn't every company use this? And the reality is, well, some of them probably think to themselves, look, yeah, it worked for all these other people, but I don't think my team has the discipline to execute or follow through. Yes, you have tools for role play, but I don't know that my team's actually going to do the role plays every week like those other high-performing companies. Yes, you have tools to help people navigate the sales process, but I don't know that my team will have the discipline to go through those lessons and do the work. I don't know that they will show up at the coach's corner each month and role play scenarios. So how do you overcome that? Well, part of it is asking a two-part question. So the two-part question starts with, just because we work together doesn't mean we're successful. What would we measure together six months down the road to know that we were successful? And the client will usually map out exactly what they're hoping to achieve in terms of results. Then your second question is what gets to the root of the issue, which is, so even if we did everything we said we would do, what might prevent you from getting those results that are similar to what other companies have gotten? 
And that's when your client is likely to point to their own deficiencies. They're going to say, well, I don't know that our people would really effectively use this. You say, okay, you know what? I understand that. Sometimes people don't do it because they wouldn't have the right training and onboarding so they aren't comfortable. Other cases, they think their team just doesn't have the discipline to do this and they won't enforce that discipline. Which camp do you think we're in? And now we're getting to the root of the issue because they're either going to identify, yeah, we need this training, which might be an opportunity for you to add training as part of your proposal. Or they might just say, I don't think our team could actually do it. At which point you might say, well, so what if we piloted this with two or three people you think are most likely to use it? Once they can demonstrate the results, then maybe you'll have an easier time getting other people to adopt it. See, if we take a proactive approach about how they might not achieve results and what we can do to overcome those, then we're now showing them a path that says, okay, maybe it's not us, maybe it's your own internal systems, but if we can help you overcome those, then you're more likely to get a better outcome. So in this situation, remember, three beliefs. First is you need, the customer needs to believe that they've got something that you have something that's worth a change. The second is the seller's belief as well as the buyer's belief that there's something worth buying. So the seller and the buyer mo both need to believe this. Otherwise, you're probably gonna undersell things. And finally, you wanna have that third belief that the client can actually execute. And if we ask those questions in the end about what does success look like and what might prevent you from achieving those results, that's when we get on the same side with our customer and we can actually help them realize they're more likely to get the proper outcome with us than with somebody else. Hopefully this helps you unpack the mystery of B2B selling. If there are topics you'd like me to cover, just drop me a note to ian at ianaltman.com. Make sure to subscribe, share this with others, and I'll see you next week on the Same Side Selling Podcast. So long.